Hello, Nick. The stage is yours. All right. Thanks, Tal. Thanks so much for having me. I appreciate it. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited to share with everybody today. We've got a lot of great information to put in front of you. I guess just to give you a little bit more context, uh, my background is I specialize in working, especially with real estate agents, but small business owners in general. I've been working in the marketing and video space uh, for over six years at this point. And so what I'm gonna be showing you today really is all about um, creating topics, choosing topics that maximize your engagement. We're gonna talk about how to formulate your videos to a small degree. Uh, and hopefully you can come out of this presentation with a whole, whole bunch of ideas on the types of topics and content that you should be focusing on creating in your business. So let me go ahead and pull up uh, my slides here. Make sure I got the right thing. There we go. And we can uh, get rolling from here, all right? So like I said, I just do wanna stress before I get started with this presentation today that my background is in working with business owners, right? Specifically small businesses. So a lot of what I'm gonna be talking about today and obviously the name of my company's business video school uh, is gonna be in that context, right? So I'm gonna be talking to you about you know, if you are a business owner, how do you sort of identify the uh, the topics that make the most sense for you specifically, all right? So we're not gonna be giving you, uh, this isn't generalized, I'm not gonna show you, hey, in general, everybody should be talking about this particular uh, topic or thing in your videos. I'm actually gonna give you a few ways that you can figure out for yourself what kinds of topics to choose, all right? So let's go ahead and get started because we have a lot to cover today. Now. The first thing I wanted to do before we get into the, the sort of process of choosing these topics is I wanted to show this graphic because this is something I always try to remind myself of on a regular basis. And that is why are people on social media in the first place, right? What are they showing up to see? And if I can keep that in mind when it comes to the video content that I'm creating, I'm probably going to capture more attention, right? I'm gonna get more engagement on my videos. I'm gonna start better conversations and I'm gonna ultimately grow my following faster if I know ahead of time what people are looking for, okay? Now this is Facebook, but this could probably apply to any of the platforms out there, including YouTube. And so when we look at this, we're gonna see that especially when it comes to social media, people are here to connect with family and friends, number one. In fact, 88% of people said that that was one of the reasons that they come to social media. The next highest ranked reason was to get uh, to get entertainment. They wanna be entertained. They wanna see something that's gonna you know, make them feel something right have a little bit of fun and then the third one is to get news now coming in fourth on this total list with only 17 percent of people responding with this was to follow brands and companies all right so if you are a business owner or even if you're just trying to become an influencer right and you're trying to grow that following you got to keep these these details in mind people are not here to hear about your business, right? They're not necessarily on social media to start to see promotions from you and your business, right? So instead, you have to think to yourself, how can I try to create content? How can I talk about things in my videos that are gonna capture people's attention on those thir first three areas, right? Can I entertain them? Can I provide news or education? Um, can I even engage with them in a way that builds a relationship where they're getting to know me over time? And that's what we're gonna be focusing in on today, all right? So here's another rule that we like to teach to our students. That is the 80-20 rule of good content, all right? This is specific to businesses, so please please keep that in mind, right? This is a rule that's, that's sort of meant for businesses, but it, it is a pretty general rule, and that is that 80% of the content you create, 80% of the topics you choose, 80% of the videos you make should be value-driven. They should be providing something of value to your audience, educating them, entertaining them, making them laugh, making them feel some sort of emotion. And then 20% of your content can be promotional. And in fact, what I've found in my experience here is that if you make the content that's value driven all about value and you do not promote yourself or your business or try to get people to go buy something, they're gonna like that. They're gonna appreciate that most of the time when they come to see something from you, it's all about them having a great experience. And then that 20% of the time where you are being promotional, just be promotional. You don't have to bury it. You don't have to pretend like the video is about something else. Just tell them what it is that you need from your audience, all right? And so try to have the, the ratio here breaks down to four value-driven videos. I'm gonna give you a whole bunch of ideas for topics here in a few minutes, and then one 
promotional video, right? So if you try to use that ratio, you're gonna keep your audience engaged, they're gonna like you, they're gonna be excited to see your next video, and they're not gonna mind when you're promotional. In fact, they're gonna be more likely to go take action, right? So if you're going the influencer route, the way to interpret this is you should have at least four posts that are completely beneficial to your viewer or your audience before you ever promote maybe a sponsor or something that you're trying to sell, all right? So try to follow that 80-20 rule, you're gonna be in great shape. Now, the next thing you're gonna to wanna to do when it comes to figuring out the types of content, the topics, the things you wanna focus on in your videos that are going to get really good results, you wanna make sure you know and understand your audience, right? Now, there are simple ways you can do this, and it depends on the size of your existing audience, and that's gonna sort of determine the process you're gonna take here. The easiest thing I've ever found is just to ask, right? Just ask your audience what they wanna see more of. And if you don't have that many followers yet, let's say you're a business owner and you're thinking about using video to start growing your business, you're gonna need to simply ask them, right? So go out to your best customers, the people you've done the most business with, or people you've really enjoyed working with, and ask them, what are the things that they'd like to see more of? What are some of their pain points? What are some things they're dealing with in their lives right now that are frustrating to them, right? And on the other side of the coin, what are some of the things that they are experiencing that are making them happy? What are they excited about? What are they looking forward to, right? And what we're looking for there is we're looking for their pain points and their interests. And that's ultimately what you're going for, is you wanna figure out what are the pain points and what are the interests of the people that you would like to have as followers, right? Or the people that you would like to be doing business with, and you're gonna to wanna to hone in on those things. Now, one other quick mention, and something I'll point out here, is that you're going to have much better results the more specific that you are. So if you're thinking to yourself, well, I don't wanna pigeonhole, you know, I don't wanna only have my, my topics be about certain things, you're actually getting it backwards. You actually need your topics to be consistent. You wanna talk about the same things on a regular basis. And in fact, we would call those content pillars. You wanna have certain things you're gonna come back to over and over again, because guess what? That's what you do when you talk to individual people. If you have a friend or a family member and you, you meet up with them and you're having a conversation, you tend to talk about the same things, right? You're gonna have certain topics that the two of you share an interest in and you're going to come back to those over and over again. And in fact, that's the same way you should be talking to your audience. You should be talking to them as if it's just one person that you're having an intimate, personalized conversation with and if you do that and you think of your audience, and it's actually called a customer avatar, if you come up with this profile of your ideal audience member and you focus on that person, you're going to choose the right topics and you're going to have better, more consistent results as, as a result of that, right? So here's how we think about this. Here's what you're ultimately trying to do. On the one hand, you wanna understand for my audience, for my customer, because again, we spoke, we speak mostly to business owners here, what are their pain points? What are their interests? What are things they're passionate about? But also, what are some things that they've struggled with, right? Um, we work with a lot of real estate agents, right? So sometimes for them, their ideal customer might be struggling to buy their first home. That might be a painful experience that they're going through. And you'd be surprised when we talk about something that's painful, when we talk about something that we've had to overcome in our own lives, that tends to resonate really strongly with our audience. So don't always think 100% positively here, right? You wanna have stuff that's fun, that you're enthusiastic, what are your interests, what are your passions, but you also wanna talk about some of the scarier things because those are going to get a ton of attention. In fact, if you look at some of the most popular videos on YouTube, a lot of times they're gonna be videos that aren't necessarily positive emotional experiences. They're people sharing you know, intimate moments in their lives or people talking about things they've dealt with that were really painful or frustrating. And what happens is if you choose the right topics, the topics that your audience finds uh, that, that resonates with them, they're going to watch that content and they're gonna bond with you. They're gonna get to know you through that content and they're gonna form a more meaningful relationship with you as a result, okay? So the, the ultimate takeaway from the first part of this presentation is just think about what is it your audience's experience and what can you find to talk about that helps those people, 
that also interests you, right? So what is it you're going to enjoy talking about, but you also know that your audience is gonna like? And now I'm gonna give you a whole bunch of ideas on the different kinds of videos and the different topics you can choose. But the point is you need to choose this for yourself. This has to be something that not only fits your ideal audience, but also fits your own passions and interests, right? Because that's gonna make it easy for you to come back to over and over again and talk about these types of content, right? Now here's the next thing we want to do. So once we start to survey our audience and we start to understand what is it that they like, what is it that they've experienced, what are some of their pain points, the, the struggles they might be facing that we can help them with, the next part of this process, and probably in my mind the hardest part of it, is choosing themes. And here's what you want to do. Whenever we are making video content and we're trying to grow a following, it's really important that we have themes, okay? We also call these content pillars when we're approaching this from a business perspective. And the reason that's so important is that if you talk about different things all the time, you are going to appeal to your audience on some days and other days you will not. You'll actually lose their interest, okay? So give me, let me give you an example of this. If I know that the people that I wanna work with, the people I want to be following me on social media, if I know that they're really interested in sports, but they don't care at all about, uh, let's just say ballet, right? So those are pretty different topics. You know, the, the, the fans of those two categories tend not to overlap that much, right? So if one day I come out and I talk about soccer or if I, you know, I talk about football, you know, and I'm talking about these sports and I'm talking about how much fun they are and my audience is getting really excited. And then the next day I come by and I talk about ballet and all of them go, what do you, what do you mean? I don't have any interest in ballet. What's going on here? I guess, I guess this person's maybe not as interesting to me as I thought they were. That can be a problem. That's going to be really confusing. And a lot of people tend to do this with their videos where one day they're making a video on this topic and the next day it's something completely different and so on and so on and so on. They're always trying different topics and they can't figure out why they're not getting any traction. And this is why. Here's the thing, right? We become known for the things we talk about frequently. And that's it. If I just continue to keep coming through and talking about football, I'm going to grow a following of people who also like football. And I have to keep talking about it because that's why they started following me, okay? You don't need just one. So in, in, you know, in our, our uh, suggestion would be anywhere from three to five, three to five themes that you can come back to over and over and over again. And if you do that, you're going to start to get really good results, right? This is how you keep your audience engaged and interested. So what are some examples here? What are some things that you can focus on as topics to come back to over and over again? Well, here's a few. These are very general, but there are plenty of others you can choose. But these that you see on your screen so far, there's six total. These are the probably most common themes that we've seen people choose. And those are gonna be family, um, health or food. And honestly, I think those are even two different categories you could talk on. Uh, pets. So let's say you have a really cute dog or cat and you want to feature them in your content all the time. Well, once you start doing it, you're probably not going to stop, right? So that could be a really powerful theme for you. Uh, work. Work can be another one that's really powerful. We talk with uh, our real estate agent clients all the time. We say, look, you can talk about work some of the time. That can be one of your pillars, especially if you want to recruit other real estate agents, right? That's going to be really powerful because you're going to show them what's going on in your day. People are going to find that interesting and they're going to want to come work with you because they see what you do. Um, sports is another one. Travel is another one, right? Now, here's the idea. You want to pick just a few of these. You don't want to pick all of them and you want to come back to them over and over and over again. So let's just say, uh, for instance, I wanted to talk about travel. Well, sometimes I'm gonna go traveling, right? That's been particularly hard the past year, um, but I'm gonna do some traveling. So while I'm traveling, I'm gonna document what I'm doing, I'm gonna make vlog style content, I'm gonna talk about the different destinations I'm going to, but even when I'm not traveling, I'm still going to come back to that theme, right? I'm gonna talk about planning my trips, I'm gonna talk about the latest news, uh, maybe, you know, different things in different destinations. I could feature different places I'm thinking about traveling to. But the point is I'm going to talk about travel and a lot of my content over and over and over again. Now, there's some of you sitting out there that are going, you know what, I get it, but I'm not into traveling. I don't travel that much. And that's not something I want to talk about. And that's the beauty of this, right? We don't all have to talk about the same things. We get to pick the themes that we want to focus on. The key is to just continue to come back to those things over and over and over again, all right? 
Now let's talk about as we get into making the videos here, what kinds of videos can we make? And I'm going to run through a whole bunch of ideas for you very quickly. So you might want to take some notes for the next few minutes here. But these, these types of videos, at least in my experience, tend to fall into two categories. And I'm sure there's other categories you could probably define. But to keep it th simple, we think of these as evergreen or timely, right? So what that means, is that when you make a video, some videos I could shoot today and it's going to make sense. It's going to be relevant still a year or two or three years from now, right? So for instance, if I teach someone, um, you know, let me, let me, let me say uh, on the travel topic, let's keep coming back to that one, right? Uh, maybe I want to teach someone how to say a few words in a different language because they might be traveling to that country. That's not going to change in the next few years, right? Languages don't shift that fast. So that would be evergreen content. That's something that if I put it on YouTube, it could continue to get discovered for years to come, and it's going to always have some relevance. Well, that's one kind of content. Another kind is what we would call timely, which is where content is only valuable or only makes sense for the next few days or weeks or months, right? And eventually, it's going to lose its relevance. So an example there would be news. Right? So let's think if we're, if we're talking about traveling, if I put out news about the airlines and the updates uh, that they're going through, right? The, the seating arrangements, maybe the fact that they're not requiring masks anymore at some point, then who knows if that'll ever happen, right? But that's timely content because it's really useful for your followers today. It's news, it's something that they might wanna know, but in a few weeks from now, it's gonna be outdated and it's not gonna be interested in, interesting anymore. So keep that in mind. There's sort of two categories. And if you're doing this correctly, you're probably going to find that you're creating both kinds of content, things that are really relevant today and then things that are going to stay relevant for a long time. And if you balance those together, you're generally going to have a very good blend of the kinds of videos that you're creating. So that being said, now's the part where I run through a bunch of different examples. You know, what are what are some kinds of videos that we could be out there creating, right? And so the idea here for the next few minutes is I'm just going to sort of read through a bunch of these. You can take notes. I'm going to pitch you a couple quick ideas. Uh, but the idea is that you're trying to find what resonates with you. So as I go through these, if you hear one that you go, oh, that sounds kind of fun. I think I could make a video like that. That's what I want you to write down, right? We want you to find the kinds of content that you're going to find interesting or entertaining to work on because it's going to keep you motivated. So educational videos, this is probably one of my favorite kinds of content. In fact, uh, doing this workshop right now is a perfect example. I'm delivering educational content. I love talking about uh, video and marketing and business. And so I love doing educational stuff. There's a lot of different aspects to education. Some of it might be how to. That's a great video for YouTube. If you show somebody how to do anything, that is going to probably perform well on YouTube because there's lots of searches for how to style videos on YouTube. Maybe there's common FAQs. What are some of the things that you deal with on a regular basis in your job or your business? You can talk about those. Myths and misconceptions. I love this one. Focus in on the things that people misunderstand about your topic, right? Maybe again, let's let's just keep using travel as an example because it's an easy one to talk about. You know, what are some myths or misconceptions around traveling? What are some things people don't understand that you might want to inform them of? Um, another format here that we use is what's called a listicle video, which is where you take really any of these, these three other formats and you just list out items. I love that format of video because it's very easy to create. Three things you didn't know about traveling in 2021, right? There you go. That's the topic. That's the, the hook for the video. And now you just list off three things and you're done. Very, very simple form of content. Um, another category that you can focus on is behind the scenes. This is another style of video that tends to perform very well and one that I'd really encourage you to check out. So a couple examples of a behind the scenes video that you could make. Day in the life. This is the vlog style. This is where somebody's essentially uh, either following you around with a camera or maybe you're using your own camera and kind of documenting your, your day to day life. It is a more complex video, but it is a really powerful kind of video because you're able to show people what's going on behind the scenes, which most people find really interesting, right? So especially if you're a business owner, that's a great way to document. You might not think your days are all that exciting, but just because most people don't see those days on a regular basis, they're going to be curious about it. 
You can highlight community hotspots. This is a great one. If you're a local business owner, one of the easiest forms of content you can make is just simply documenting what's going on in your community, right? What are some upcoming events? What are some interesting things that might be happening? And just simply making videos about those is gonna get you views from the people who live in your area. That's really important to remember is your views need to come from people who live near your business. So focus on things that are happening in your community, right? Um, another one that would be really cool is touring a home or a business, right? So uh, get out into your community. And this, this goes for anybody that wants to build a local following. Tour the local businesses. Ask other business owners if you can feature them. Go into their shops, go into their restaurants, have a conversation, record the whole thing. It makes really, really compelling behind the scenes videos. Now, another category, and I, like I said, I am flying pretty quickly here, so bear with me, but this is a lot of, uh, a lot of potential topics you can cover. Another one is local videos. Now, if you're a local business owner, if you own you know, a physical business or you do business in a particular part of town, these are super powerful. This is something you should absolutely be doing. And there's three, this is just a quick overview. There's all kinds of different versions of local videos you can do, but news, upcoming events, and profiling local leaders are three are the easiest. News is super easy, just keep your eye on the local news that's happening and whenever something important happens make a video about it you can literally just sit in front of a webcam and talk about it for a few minutes maybe put up a graphic or something like that um, a good a great great example of, of using big view here right because you can get out there write down a few bullet points of what happened in the news throw them in big view and then recite your video right back into your phone super simple to do upcoming events Another great example of where a teleprompter is very helpful, and I, I know this from firsthand experience, if you try to remember the details for several events, you're probably not going to remember them very well when you're making the video, so it's very helpful to have your script in front of you. So those are a few examples from local content. Another category is cause-related videos. These are very powerful. So maybe there's a nonprofit or a charity that you support that you would like to make a video about. People love this kind of content. That's gonna resonate really well as long as the charity you're focusing on is one that your audience would also wanna support, right? Rant videos, this, this is one that I haven't done that many times, but they are always fun. And the idea there is to just give an impassioned argument in favor or against a particular topic. They don't have to be political. They don't have to be controversial. They just need to have some enthusiasm and emotion behind them. And then uh, any sort of mission-based video is gonna, be, uh, is gonna be powerful here, right? A um, couple more categories to wrap things up. Anticipation videos. This is another category of something that you can do. These could be unboxing. Um, it could be giveaways that you're doing, fail or cringe videos. I'll tell you right now, unboxing videos for some reason do tend to perform very well if you get the opportunity to do them. And then obviously you've also just got in general entertaining videos, right? Music parodies, comedy sketches, talent videos. I, I We had one of our students uh, one time just go live on Facebook and teach people how to juggle. It got a ton of attention, right? We had actually people, there's people watching this video at home trying to learn how to juggle by following along. So you don't have to overthink it. I just ran through a whole bunch of different kinds of videos that you could be making, but what you need to focus on is what are you going to enjoy doing and what is your audience going to find interesting as well? And that's gonna make the best possible video. So. As we wrap up the presentation, so we have a few minutes for Q&A here, I just wanna give you a really quick structure for your videos, and then I'd be happy to take your questions after that point. And here's the basic structure. I don't want you to overthink this, but there's three main parts to a successful video, the hook, the body, and the closing. And all you really have to understand here is the first three seconds of your video is where you need to get people interested in the topic. So cut to the point, don't introduce yourself tell them exactly what the video is about, right? Like I said earlier, three things you need to think about before you hop on a plane to travel somewhere in 2021. That's a hook, right? That's a compelling statement that's gonna grab somebody's attention. And if they find that interesting, they're gonna stick around, they're gonna watch the body. And the closing, last thing I'll mention on the closing is try to only have one call to action. Don't ask them to do a bunch of different things ask them to do just one. You want them to like the video and share it, then say you know, one, of the, one of those two things. You know, click the button to share. If you want them to subscribe, click the button to subscribe. But don't, one of the things that drives me nuts, especially for business owners, is telling people, email me or call me or text me or hop on Facebook, you know, whatever you want. 
just pick one, you're going to be more likely to get people to actually take that action, right? So just remember that, that, that uh, structure, hook, body, closing, give them something in the first three seconds to capture their attention, and then at the end, just one call to action, right? So that's quite a bit of information. Hopefully, you're able to write down um, a few ideas in terms of topics that might work well for you and, and your business if you are a business owner. Um, I did want to throw this slide up at the end here as we take uh, questions next. And that is, you know, if you do want any free video lessons, if you'd like to learn more about using video in your business, and I, I do want to mention if you're not in the US, I don't know if this will work. So just keep that in mind. Um, but what you can do is just text us at 44222 with the phrase learn video. And that's a way to get signed up for our email list. I, I can see there's uh, some of our contact information uh, also there over in the comments as well. So that's all I got for you today. Um, if we do have any questions, I'd be happy to answer those next. Okay, uh, thank you so much, Nick. It was great, very Good. interesting. And uh, all of you feel free to ask questions in the chat right now. I send you Nick's information, his website, Facebook, and email to contact him uh, if the code is not working that he just showed. And also BigView's information um, with how to download BigView and our support team, whatever you like. So feel free to ask questions now. Okay. Uh, in the meantime, I just want to say that uh, Nick created a, a teaser for this event and he really applied the things that he's talked about. For example, um, the first three seconds were really compelling and I think it's really important to, to be concise and this is how Big View helps you to create the concise message that you want. So it's really important. Yeah, uh, that, that's a huge point. I think if you, can, if you can think about that stuff in advance, that helps quite a bit because then you can write it out and you know you're going to say the right thing. Yeah. Um, so I don't see any questions actually. Okay. So we'll give you a few more seconds. Let's see. Sounds good. <laughs> okay. So I want to thank you, all of you. And uh, of course, uh, you and Nick for the presentation. And uh, hopefully we'll do it again. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Yeah. Just let me know. Right. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>